Whether you're using your own vermicompost or buying it, you're going to want to know how much to use in your garden. We'll get to that on today's short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. Worm castings are an awesome biologically active soil amendment that can improve soil health, increase germination, improve root growth, increase plant yield, and make your plants less susceptible to pests and pathogens. But if you're adding worm castings, which is the finished poop fraction of vermicompost to your soil, you're gonna wanna know how much to add. Worm castings can be kind of expensive, and you do reach a point of diminishing returns and even negative effects if you use too much. So today's video is gonna give you some handy rules of thumb when it comes to applying worm castings, which is gonna drive your decision for how much of it that you need to buy. You can apply worm castings in one of three ways, on the soil, in the soil and on the plants. And you would apply it on the plants using worm tea or extract. For today's video, we're only gonna focus on the first two. If you wanna know how to make and apply worm tea, click this little link above my left shoulder and you can go to a collection of blog posts we've got on the benefits of worm tea, how to make it and how to apply it. Okay, let's talk about using worm castings on the soil. If you've got established plants or you don't wanna disturb your soil, you can do what's called top dressing or side dressing to add worm castings to the top of your soil. With top dressing, as the name suggests, you're blanketing worm castings on the top of whatever soil you're looking to amend. With side dressing, you're adding worm castings to the side of the stems at the base of your plant. This is a more targeted approach. For top dressing, most people wanna add either a one half inch to one inch layer of worm castings to their soil. So let's do the math to find the volume of worm castings that you need. You first want to find the square footage of the area you want to top dress. For an 8 foot by 4 foot standard raised bed, this is 32 square feet. But remember, we're looking for volume, so we need to find the depth in feet as well. So we'll take a 1 inch depth and divide by 12 inches, which gives us 0.08 feet. Multiply that times 32 square feet, and this gives us a volume of 2.66 cubic feet. Now we sell in pounds here at the Urban Worm Company, and our castings are kind of dense, with a cubic foot equaling roughly 38 pounds. Multiply 38 pounds times 2.66 and you get just a little over 100 pounds. Again, this is for a one inch layer of worm castings, which is kind of a lot. For a half inch layer, you'd obviously cut that number down to 50 pounds for an eight foot by four foot raised bed. But no matter how much you use, you'll apply worm castings as evenly as possible, maybe scratch into the surface somewhat and water it in to get that organic matter and those microbes down into your soil. A more targeted approach to using worm castings and one that requires a little less math is to side dress or apply one to two cups of worm castings to the stems of established plants and then water the area well. The math is simple. However many established plants you treat is however many cups you need. For two cups per plant, you would obviously double that number. For reference, our four quart bag of worm castings equals 16 cups, which would treat 16 established plants. Of course, top dressing and side dressing are how we apply castings on the soil. Okay, for those of you who are making your soil from scratch, you're more interested in using worm castings in the soil. And I'll cut right to the good stuff. You're gonna want your soil to consist of anywhere from five to 20% worm castings. But the academic studies I've seen from places like Cornell, Ohio State, and the University of Hawaii Hilo suggests that the greatest amount of benefit of worm castings is typically realized at a 10% rate. This means that 10 cubic feet of soil will consist of one cubic foot of worm castings. Above 10% can provide you some benefit, but you start seeing diminishing returns as you approach 20%. Above 20%, you can start to see negative effects. So more of a good thing isn't always a good thing. So let's say you're starting a four foot by eight foot raised bed from scratch. Most raised beds assume a depth of about eight to 12 inches, although deeper rooting plants like tomatoes prefer 24 inches or more. We'll keep the math simple and assume your four foot by eight foot raised garden bed has a depth of one foot. So four feet times eight feet times one foot equals 32 cubic feet of soil. 10% of 32 cubic feet is 3.2 cubic feet. At 38 pounds of our worm castings per cubic foot, you're looking at around 120 pounds of castings. For less dense worm castings, and like I said, ours are fairly dense, the volume doesn't change, but the weight will. So you may only want, let's say, 100 pounds of lighter worm castings for that eight foot by four foot raised bed. Okay, I wanna to touch on teas real fast because I mentioned it earlier. You can take a much smaller amount of worm castings and treat a vastly larger area when using worm tea. This is great for applying biology, but tea will not apply organic matter to your soil. 
So if your soil lacks organic matter, and one way to tell is if your soil has no worms in it, you're gonna to wanna to stick to treating your soil and plants with the worm castings themselves. Manure and compost are other excellent sources of organic matter, but they'll likely lack the biological diversity of nutrient cycling microbes that you're gonna find in worm castings. Guys, it's tough to make a short video that comprehensively addresses all the scenarios you're gonna face, but giving you a few simple rules of thumb will help prevent you from underbuying or overbuying worm castings. So remember, a one half to one inch layer of worm castings for top dressing, one to two cups of worm castings for each established plant for side dressing, or a 10% substitution rate, and remember that's by volume, for using castings in your soil. One more thing, if you're worried about buying too much because you think the worm castings will go bad, know this. We harvested a fresh bin of worm castings and had them tested. We stored another sample of castings from that same bin and had those tested six months later. Later. There was almost no change in biology except for a decrease in nematodes and a small increase in fungi. Otherwise, six-month-old worm castings stored in dark conditions away from extreme temperatures are just as good as the fresh stuff. In fact, we've got some bulk customers that actually ask for the oldest stuff we've got due to the increased fungal content. And if you want a PDF that outlines everything we talked about today and gives you the math formulas you need to make your buying decisions, click this little link again above my left shoulder and you can sign up for our email list and get that guide immediately. That's it gang. I hope you found this helpful. We'll see you on the next video.